Back when I was in high school, I remember going to pep rallies and we had a gym uh, that had stands kind of surround the basketball court. And uh, we'd have one class over in one corner, uh, the junior class over in another corner, the freshman class way in the corner over there. And then of course the seniors right in the middle uh, at one of the end of the basketball courts. And, and uh, inevitably what would start would be a chant and it would simply go like this. We've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? And as we said, how about you? We would point to a different section of classes and then they would chant, um, yes, we've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? And they point to across the basketball court to the next class and, and we would just do that for um, sometimes 10 minutes and it was kind of fun to do that. Um, here's a quick example of a high school football team doing the very same thing. So one year I was at camp and I decided I wanted to do that with the kids. And so I had uh, in the chapel, we had two sections of seats. And so I had one section of seats look across the aisle to the other section of seats. And we said, we love Jesus. Yes, we do. We love Jesus. How about you? And they would point across the aisle and they would start screaming. We love Jesus. Yes, we do. We love Jesus. How about you? And they'd point back and we would just get it louder and stronger and louder and stronger. And, and everybody was participating. It was really a lot of fun. And then I got up on stage and I said, prove it. A lot of you said you love Jesus. Do you? Really? Then prove it. I want to read to you from a, a parable uh, today from Matthew. Uh, and he is quoting Jesus when he tells this story. What do you think? There's a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the other son and he said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what the father wanted? And the Pharisees were standing there and they said, well, the first, they answered. And Jesus said, truly, I tell you that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe in him. In this parable, Jesus is, is uh, trying to illustrate to the Pharisees. It's not about how you run the race and where you're in the race you do well. It's about finishing the race. It's about actually doing the things that God wants us to do. We can wear whatever labels and titles we want. We can put on a good face. We can, we can even uh, post good little Instagram and Facebook messages. But what really matters is proving it. How do we show that we truly love Jesus? Just saying the words and pointing across the aisle and challenging other people to say the words isn't going to get it done. We have to put our words into action. We have to show that we truly love Jesus. And in this parable, Jesus is saying to the Pharisees, look, you were here already. You were God's chosen people, but you've gone a long way from the way that God wants you to be. But these prostitutes and these uh, tax collectors, they weren't doing anything that God wanted them to be, but they have repented and they have come to the Lord and now they're on the right track. Which one did the right thing? So I want to encourage you, do the right thing.